SpongeBob SquarePants Mysteries Find a Missing Star. Chapter 25. I knew the sound of angry pirates when I heard it. Could this day get any worse? Oh, if only I knew about Patrick's secret that he wanted to dress up like a pirate and call himself Pinky, maybe I could have cracked this case pronto without going through all this stress. But I knew the deal when I signed up to be a private eye. Stress came with the job, big time. <gasps> the pirates! Scorch shrieked. They must have escaped from their den and now they're coming after us! Nodding, SpongeBob said. I think you're right, Squidward. That definitely sounds like a horde of furious pirates. What are we going to do? Squidward cried. SpongeBob pulled his bubble pipe out of his trench coat pocket, found his small bottle of liquid soap, and unscrewed the cap. What are you doing? Squidward screamed, rubbing his head. This is no time to stand there puffing on your stupid bubble pipe. We're about to be captured by a mob of pirates. Again! Arr, arr, arr! In the distance, the pirates ran towards SpongeBob and Scorn, waving their cutlasses and carrying the two burlap sacks they'd used to bag the detectives back in the eye patch and peg leg. There they be! Short John Purple screeched. We've got them cornered! Ha 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 ha! Nasty Ned cackled. He yanked Squawky's string and let it go. What? Yo ho ho! The fake parrot squawked. You said it, Nasty Ned agreed. Bag em! The pirates yelled as they ran. Score panicked. <gasps> Come on, SpongeBob! We've got to run and hide! Shaking his head, SpongeBob said, We're through running, partner. But then, what are we supposed to do? Fight? Nope, SpongeBob said. Float! Float? Scored asked, bewildered. Float? What do you mean, float? SpongeBob filled his pipe with soap, aimed it at Squidward, and began to blow. A big bubble grew out of the pipe's bowl, and enveloping Squidward. With a quick twist of his wrist, SpongeBob separated the bubble from the pipe. Squidward began to float up the face of the sheer rock cliff in his bubble. The pirates were getting closer. SpongeBob poured more soap into his pipe and blew a big bubble around himself. With another nimble tr wrist twist, he released the bubble from his pipe. The bubble floated up along the perpendicular precipice, precipice just below Squidward's bubble. By the time the pirates arrived, at the base of the cliff, SpongeBob and Squidward had just floated out of reach. The pirates leapt as high as they could, slicing out the bubbles with their swords, but they missed over and over. Ha ha ha! Squidward laughed, smugly taunting the pirates from the safety of his rising bubble. See you later, suckers! We're off to enjoy our treasure! Maybe next time, bring a cannon! The pirates rolled a huge cannon out of the darkness into the light and aimed it up at Squidward's bubble. Oh, me and my big fat mouth! <laughs> Squidward gulped. A pirate lit the fuse, and <laughs> the other pirates ran for cover and stuck their fingers in their ears. Don't worry, Squidward, SpongeBob reassured his friend. Don't worry, Squidward cried. Those pirates are about to shoot a cannonball at me! Boom! The cannon fired and the heavy black cannonball shot out of its barrel, zooming straight towards Squidward's bubble. Wah! Squidward screamed, watching in horror as the cannonball surged up toward him. In mere seconds it reached the bottom of the bubble, but the bubble didn't break. In his bubble, SpongeBob proudly held up his bottle of liquid soap. Its label read, Super Soap for Bubbles, guaranteed cannonball proof. Smiling, SpongeBob said, Always look for the cannonball proof guarantee! <laughs> As Squidward lifted his four legs, terrified, the cannonball pushed into the bottom of the bubble. The bubble curved in but didn't pop, so the force of the cannonball pushed Squidward's bubble up the side of the rocky trench at an enormous speed. 
Whoa! Squidward screamed as he rocketed up in the bubble. Squidward! SpongeBob shouted from below. When you reach the top, pop the bubble with your hat pin! I have a hat pin? Squidward yelled. He frantically yanked his wide brimmed detective hat off his head and felt around the black band. Sure enough, there was a hat pin stuck in the band. He pulled it out and watched the rock face tear by, waiting for the perfect moment to pop his bubble and jump out onto the familiar land just outside the Bikini Bottom city limits. Zoom! The pirates must have packed plenty of blasting powder into their cannon because the cannonball showed no signs of slowing down as it raced up the side of the cliff, pushing the bubble with scoring in it. Squidward looked up. Ahead, the darkness of the deep trench gradually gave way to the light shining down from the ocean surface. He was approaching the top of the cliff. He had to time this just right. If he popped his bubble too soon, he'd plummet back down into the waiting arms of the pirates and rock bottom. If he popped it too late, he'd be too far above the level of Bikini Bottom to jump out and land safely. He was sweating with nerves and the heat of the rocketing bubble. Finally, he saw it, the top edge of the rock wall. He held the hat pin firmly, ready to plunge it into the taut, glistening skin of the bubble. Just as he passed the edge, he struck. Pop! The bubble burst. For just a second, Sword found himself standing on the cannonball, riding it up as it continued its ascent. Then he leaped off, tumbled to the ground in a tangle of tentacles, and rolled coming to a stop just before he slammed into a boulder. Scoor let out a big sigh of relief. <sighs> Moments later, Spongebob slowly breached the lip of the cliff in his own bubble, still floating up peacefully. Grinning, he slipped the hat pin out of his own hat span, pricked the bubble, and hopped down to the ground. You okay, Squidward? he asked. Squidward checked himself for broken bones. Everything seemed alright. I guess so, he admitted. Thanks. You're welcome, partner, Spongebob said, helping him out to his feet. As he walked past the Bikini Bottom City Limits sign into town, Squidward said, Well, we're back, but we still don't know who kidnapped Patrick or where they're holding him. Oh, you don't have to remind me, pal, Spongebob said gloomily. It's constantly on my mind. So what's our next move, Squidward asked. The familiar buildings of Bikini Bottom had come into view. The sun was coming up on a new day. The pirates had held him in rock bottom overnight. I'm not sure, Spongebob admitted. But I should probably go home and feed Gary. Good idea, Score said. You swim by your house to feed your snail. While you're there, you can check Patrick's house just to make sure he hasn't come home. I'll check in at the Krusty Krab to let Mr. Krabs know what's going on, then I'll meet you back at your place. Okay. Spongebob said, sounding discouraged. He charged off toward his house. Oh, and Spongebob, Squidward called after him. Yes, Squidward? He said, turning back. That was pretty quick thinking with your bubble pipe, Squidward told him. Good job. Spongebob smiled a sad little smile. Thanks, but... It still didn't lead us to Patrick. Stay tuned for chapter 26 coming up soon.